Thank you for uh, participating again in this uh, C Stand Up podcast little experiment I'm doing, man. It seems to be growing and doing pretty well. I'm here with the phenomenal veteran of comedy, Cool Bubba Ice, who's been up, playing y'all? stages across the world since about what, when you start, bro. Uh, 1989, January of 1989. I love it. So do you remember the first guy to t- bring you to stage? Uh huh. The first person to bring you to the stage to give you the mic. Who was that? Do you remember? Ah, yeah, now, I don't know that. That's, that's that's too detailed. I just remember going on stage. Where Where were you time. at? Where was uh, your first, first time? The first The first time I hopped on stage. We did this Christian retreat. My best friend, we do these Christian retreats. And yeah. at first, that, that, I think that was like the second year, third year, we went and um, we went to this Christian retreat. And my boy, he always wanted to rap. And I always did like impersonations. Yeah. So he went up there and, and did self-destruction. And I just went up there and started doing a whole bunch of impersonations. Everybody was laughing. Ah, ah, ah. And I yeah. said, wait, this, this sounds good. Hold on, I might want to keep doing this. Man. You be in the room with them impersonations, boy, especially that yeah. music when you put together. That's high yeah, shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm actually I'm actually bringing that joke back. So oh, I'm bringing, I, yeah, I'm bringing it back. I'm bringing it yeah. back. I love it. I love it. I know you're gonna be out here in Chicago at yep. TNT real soon. So man, um, I'm gonna make sure I put this out a little bit. Maybe I can help one or two people walk in there. It's probably gonna be sold out anyway. That place real new right now. And Leon Rogers is the host, so it's gonna be, it's gonna do what it do, man. I'm very happy that you did, uh, you know, get a booking for uh, this, you know, from them in their early stages because it's gonna help them stay open, man. So yeah, give us a little bit more history on you. So you started off in '89, and you didn't start off as like a Christian comic, or did you? No, you just okay. No, I was said a Christian man. You know, a lot of cats do that. And so, so where'd you go from there? How'd you, how'd you say, I'm going to do this? Oh, oh, well, after I did the, uh, the Christian retreat that weekend, yeah. I, said, I said, you know what? I want to do this full. I mean, I, I always really wanted to do it. I just didn't know when I was going to do it. Yeah. So when I did that Christian retreat thing. I said, you know what? I got to start doing this. So I think I shot like a, a, a 20 minute video at this video store in Jersey City. Okay. And, I, I, I was up there. I don't know if I did. I think I did 12 minutes, but it felt like 45. Because <laughs> I never yeah. did it before, so I didn't know what I was doing. I wrote the jokes. I didn't really know how they was going to go. Yeah. It was no audience in there. It was just me and the cameraman. Right. And they taped the whole... And I wish I could find that video tape so I could watch it. Like, uh, I'll probably be cringing watching it. Like, uh. <laughs> but um, I just wanted to watch and see what I how I even pulled that off. Yeah. I think it was like 10. It might have been like 12 or 15 minutes long. I shot that, and then after that, um, uh, 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 Queen Latifah mother, what's her name, was Miss Owens. Yeah. She, uh, rest in peace. That's my that's my baby right there. She, um, she said they wanted to throw a, a, a comedy. They wanted to throw a, a talent show. Yeah. So instead of just throwing a talent show, they wanted to do um, basically like a, a a talent show, but they was gonna say it was a black celebration. Right. But because they had to sneak and say it was gonna be a black celebration because they had talent shows before. And people went crazy and and, and sort of place apart. So they said no more, no more talent shows. Yeah. But Miss Owen's smart idea was she was gonna make it seem like it was a um a, a, a black celebration, but it was actually a talent show. Right. So she had singers, rappers, and all that type of stuff. So what I did was I brought my tape in, and like and Latifah was like, "Yo, this that mobile, this that mobile right here, mama. He, he funny. He said I like him, mama. He funny. Da, da, da. I like, oh for real? It's like cool. So she thought it was funny. Yeah. So she, she saw my tape. She thought my tape was funny. So then, um, they they took the tape. They, they liked it, and they put me in the comp, and they put me in the in the show. So when I went on, I had my Eddie Murphy raw. I'm having an Eddie Murphy raw outfit on with the, with the, with the it was all black with yeah. the black gloves on with yeah. the with the cold rings on the gloves. That was odd stuff, man. And um, <laughs> I went on stage, and these cats just started booing me, and I didn't even say nothing yet. Right. And this, girl, and this girl named Keisha, she was, that dudes were scared of Keisha. That's how hardcore Keisha was. Yeah. She said, why don't y'all shut up? So right. They shut up, because everybody was scared of Keisha, because Keisha beat up dudes and girls. Yeah. And Keisha, <laughs> Keisha shut it down. I love so, it. 
once he shut it down, they let yeah. me do my thing. And I got the craziest standing ovation in the world after I got off stage. Right, right, right. right. Okay. <laughs> Said, okay, this is I, I need to be doing this. I need to be doing this. Yeah, you got you caught that high. That's what I like to call it, boy. Yep. When you step off the stage, especially early in the game, just like heroin. That mm -hmm. shit catchy. So, quick question, man. I know this we ain't trying to go down this whole path, but is Keisha still alive? How did what happened? Yeah, I seen I seen Keisha um I think about two years ago before the pan pam stopped popping off, and I think I said, yo. <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I don't think I'd be doing this right now. That's said, crazy. Oh, man, stop saying that, bro. I said, yo, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be. So I, I definitely gave her her flowers. I always give Keisha a shout out. Yeah. Every time I do, I do an interview or talk about that time I went on stage, my first time on stage, I always give her a shout out. That would be lovely, man. I love to, I love to meet her. You know, every neighborhood got one or two of them. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. <laughs> So it's cool. She wanted, she wanted them. She wanted them girls. Boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the girls they ain't got scared of Keisha. They like, oh, uh, right. Uh, we, we had a few. The messed up one. We had we had this girl named Denise Fagan, and she had a twin brother who was my, you know, our friend. We played basketball with him, all of that. And mm -hmm. people don't realize this, but um, she was drop dead beautiful. Even mm -hmm. to this day, if I show you a picture of her, she didn't have five to six kids, still mm -hmm. banging. But she would beat the snot out of a motherfucker, dude, for real. Her whole family, all the Fagan girls, pretty, but they would scrap. <laughs> real. I seen, you know, you know, neighborhood, you have a family that's got four or five kids, then they fight another family that's got four or five kids. Yeah. Hilarious, but that's black culture right there. For yeah, I, that's weird. Yeah, she's she's pretty, yeah. That's pretty. That's rare to see that the pretty girls out. Oh fight. man, super! Fight. I mean, model fine, but she wow. was straight up disciple. <laughs> you know like, how you going? Your whole family in the game, all the girls, one dude. The boy is the youngest. Wow. Yeah, but and <laughs> drop dead gorgeous. All the women in the fake family were, well. but that's oh. that's my Keisha story. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Everybody got a key, man. Everybody yeah, that's great, man. So back to you, brother. I didn't want to go too far down that lane. But back mm -hmm. to you, man. So 89, 90, uh, around 90, I think, when was your first, uh, like, first of all, once you got a hold of comedy the right way, it was what year? About 90, 89, 90, 91-ish? Because you have you had to have gone through the mic uh, open mic system or whatever, or did you just jump, jump straight to starting to get booked? Well, no, I, it, it take a while to get booked. But what yeah. happened was when I did in '89, I started. Um, I I went to this club. My first show outside of that school was a club called Club Kayam. Yeah, and um, and at Club Kayam they had amateur night at the club, and yeah. I went up in there and I think I came in like second place or whatever. It was, you should have came in first place. Yeah. But I came in second place, and then somebody tapped me on the show and said, hey, man, they got a real comedy comedy night on Tuesday. It's called Terminal D in New Jersey. I said, okay, cool, I'm going to check it out. So I went there the first night, killed it. Yeah. Came back the second night, and I bombed my ass off. <laughs> yeah. and, and, you know, I was like, dang, I just bombed terribly. Was like, this is how I that feel. Huh? <laughs> yeah, the first time I came there, I killed my mom's was there. I killed the first time. The yeah. second time I came there, I was bombed. Yeah. And, um... I, I uh, that's when I ran into a uh, hamburger, my boy Derek Fox, Ooh. and um, they was talking to me. They said, "Yo, man, you know you're doing this comedy thing. You need to go to um Uptown Comedy Club in Harlem, and they gonna teach you how to do comedy." Yeah. So I said, "All right, cool. Give me the address. I I give him a shot." And I yeah. went out there, and I and every week I was getting better. I learned how to put a joke together, how to break a joke down. Yeah. They showed us every as to this day. I still have that book what I wrote down every aspect of comedy on how to break a joke down from the beginning the middle to end i was supposed to be funny from the beginning middle to end of the joke um uh, just everything the uh the, just, just just how to write a joke and what what was funny about it was they didn't charge us to do it they didn't charge okay. us to, to teach us how to do comedy they just said hey we're gonna have these meetings on tuesdays yeah thursdays and we came there tuesday night thursday night and they taught us how to do comedy and i was still in high school so i yeah. went from high school straight over to Harlem, learn how to do comedy. And then that Tuesday night, we would learn how to do comedy and Astro Comedy Night, which was Terminal D in New Jersey. Okay. We would come back to that spot and do comedy after they got off stage. Now, the bad part was they was paying us, but the guy we were working with was keeping all the money. 
<laughs> so, I mean, they were not all the money. They gave us like 25 ounces of the money, yeah. but they were charging the promoters like 100. So they yeah. was keeping 100 and giving us 25. Right, right. So, I mean, at the time, we wasn't even supposed to be getting paid anyway, but I mean, it was something. So now as, as time goes on, you know, people be like, oh, man, you know, da, 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 they was wrong. And I said, no, we learned to do comedy for free. Yeah, yeah. Basically, they taught us how they didn't have to teach us how to do comedy, but they learned, we learned how to do comedy for free. Yeah. And at that time, I just went as my government name. I wasn't even cool about ice at the time yet. Okay. You know, so, yeah, it, it was it was, a, it was a learning experience. They taught us a lot. They taught us how to break jokes down and yeah. and, and character and put characters in your comedy and stuff like that there. So they taught us a lot. And they didn't, like I said, they didn't have to, no. but they did. Because a lot of the mainstream would teach you, but they was charging you. And you got to yeah. bring them to the show when you perform it. They ain't want none of that. All they said, hey, come on down. We're going to teach you how to do these jokes. Yeah. Do you remember who your instructors were or some of the people in the yeah. class? Are yeah. they uh, comics still? Yeah. yeah, it was um uh this Kevin, it was the Brown, we called them the Brown brothers, Kevin and Andre Brown. They taught us how to do comedy. Um okay. the people that was in my class at the time, sheesh. That you might God. remember, they, you know. Yeah, that's come on, that's 33 years ago, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I remember you know, some of them, I remember some of them it was a uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, 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 oh, oh, um, what's oh god, man? And she, was was on Saturday Night Live. she was on Saturday Night Live. It's the funny part. She was on Saturday Night Live, and she was a student of the, of the class too. Ellen Clayhorn. Okay. So Ellen, Ellen Clayhorn. She was on Saturday Night Live for a little bit. Um, my boy Dougie Doug. He was okay, on. I remember the, Dougie Doug. Yep, Dougie Doug. He was in the class with me, and then um, as I kept going. Uh, oh, yeah, this other cat named Daryl Lina, Rajin, uh, uh, Gerard Washington, Ratso, uh, it's a bunch of people. And what happened was um, uh, Hamburger and Derek came. Yeah. And at that time, they wasn't Hamburger and, you know, they was they was a regular name. Regular name. So they was like, yo, you you getting better, bub. So, you know, because every time I was coming back, I was coming yeah. back and better and better. They said, yo, yeah. bub, you getting better. Yo, when the next time you going to Harvest? I go every Tuesday and Thursday. So yeah. they start coming with me. Okay. And then they start getting better, and they yeah. start ripping stuff up. Right. So then um, they uh, they built the axe up, and then they gave us a character. Yeah. And they told, they told you know Hamburger, you gonna yo you know you gonna be such a, a, a Lonzo Longhorn. <laughs> <laughs> like what? He said because yeah. you sound country. Yeah. So he was like I don't sound country. He said yes, you do sound country. You gonna be Lonzo Longhorn. He said but you gotta give him a, a catchphrase. And he said, well, you don't like to cuss, so every time he curses, he say Hamburger. I remember so that yeah. was that was that was the thing. So then yeah. he he kept Alonzo, but he kept, he he didn't really use Alonzo no more. So he just used Hamburger now. But yeah. back then it was Alonzo Longhorn, and then they would his catchphrase was Hamburger. Yeah. But now it's just Hamburger. That's it. it ain't even Alonzo anymore. It's Hamburger. Right. And, and then Derek Fox. He was Derek Fox, still Derek Fox, but he had two characters called Freedom Biscuit and um Shantae. And he okay. dressed up as this. He would dress up like a homeboy, <clears throat> come out there do his act. And then yeah. he would break out into this gay character named Shantae with some spandex on. It was ridiculous, <laughs> but he would tear the crowd apart. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I don't necessarily remember the Shantae dude per se, but mm -hmm. Hamburger Man, ha that Hamburger Cat actually became iconic for a small amount of time. And then it started to become uh, laughed at, you know, like, uh, like uh, 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 South Park actually spoofed him. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah, that. and, uh, and but the fame was there, man, and I appreciate him because at the time I worked at All Jokes Aside. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. that's where I first saw you, and mm -hmm. he would get booked there as a uh, as an act, a headlining act, and I liked him, and he was good, man. I'd love to get an opportunity to. Uh, I know. I heard he moved to L.A. Right? And he lived in L.A. No, he still no. He, he he's still in he's still in Jersey. He um. He actually he still he still doing people he's saying he's, he does he still do comedy? Yeah, he's still doing he no, I know he, I heard he still I mean I know he was yeah. getting booked and doing comedy. Yeah, uh, he's still on the road hard. Like yeah. he's doing he doing like um he doing shows with other with other um uh, Dev Comedy Jam alumni cats. So yeah, I mean he stayed working. I mean he's he worked just as much as me. So yeah, got, I, like, you know what? Uh, some of the cats you gave me they numbers for to, uh, I'm gonna I'm try to get them on this as well as I'm gonna start doing some more again. You called me the other week and I was like, yeah, I better go ahead and pop this back off since yep. uh, you know what it is. But yeah, man, I, I always I always appreciate your little push and you know, periodically you hustle so hard. 
Only other cat that I've seen hustle hard as you is T. Ray Sanders. You know T. Ray Sanders? Man. I mean, yeah. I I mean why, why, why would you? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm I'm just, he, I mean, matter of fact, T. Ray, T. Ray was the one that, um, uh, T. Ray is the one that directed me on other parts of the country I never heard of. Yeah. I'm like, what? You going where? <laughs> yeah, man. I'm going to Mustache, Alabama. Like, where? Mustache, <laughs> Alabama. Like, he was going to some of the weirdest places in the world. But you know, know what's funny, though? He went to spots where people weren't really doing comedy and they appreciated it. Yeah. And that's how I, and that's how I learned by working with C-Ray that everybody need to laugh. Not yeah. just people in Chicago, outside of Chicago. Yeah. Peoria, Illinois. Like, that's a home of Richard Pryor. Like, I didn't know about Peoria, Illinois until I ran to a comic out there. Um, What's his name? Oh, I feel bad. That's my dog. He brought me out there first. He's from Chicago. Yeah. Um, William, uh, Richard Williams, or what's the, something ways of, it'll hit me later. But the young yeah. brother out there in Chicago, he was the first comic to take me to Peoria, Illinois. Yeah. So yeah. I didn't know about a lot of these small spots, man. Like, T-Ray put me onto it. And yeah. I was like, yo, I yeah. need to go back to um, fat right. Mississippi. This is crazy. Like, I mean, fat <laughs> Mississippi, big butt Alabama. I mean, it's so <laughs> many things. These spots. But they appreciate comedy, and that's the yeah. most important part, is that they appreciate comedy. Yeah, so I'm supposed to be doing a show pretty soon in Hot Springs, Arkansas. I never heard of Hot Springs, Arkansas. <laughs> all, I knew Little, all I knew was Little Rock. I never heard of no Hot Springs. Oh, what, what the Hot Springs? What is this? Like, it's so many states, man. So people don't know what they miss. missing. Everybody want to go to the big cities. You need to go yeah. to the small cities. But they're nah, those cities. are most fun. The, the yeah, that's cities, cities yeah. right there. That's yeah, awesome, bro. That that is real cool, man. So, uh, yeah, you're a grinder. Well, I, I know you be everywhere. <laughs> yep. So, so, what kind of uh, what projects you got coming up, man? I know last time we talked to you, you mentioned some stuff. So, what projects you got happening? Well, right now I'm just um, putting some shows together. Right now, um, we're gonna try to redo my show over again because this this uh, um, other person we were working with it didn't work out right. So we're gonna try to do it the right. We're gonna try to get it done the right way. Um, meet me at the movies. Yeah, it's on. Um, it's still on Facebook. It's still on Instagram right now. Meet me at the movies. Meet me at the movies. Spelled M E E T. Meet me at the D A movies on YouTube right now. Season three and season four is on there right now. I'm still gonna keep pushing for this show, man. I've been doing this show back and forth for about maybe six, seven years, mm -hmm. and we just can't catch a break for nothing. As far as getting to television, but we're gonna catch it eventually. So well, what is it? What is it? It's like a um uh it's like a, a Steven Cisco and Ebert, but the black version. Okay. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. Is and, it um, clean or is it not clean? No, 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 we raw on this show. We raw. Okay, because I got I, I got a uh you know how Netflix had a star, right? I got a brother who is creating a channel like Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's always asking me to give him uh, people that might have some content and he pays, he pays for your content, mm -hmm. but um, it's mostly clean. He's out of, he's out of Oklahoma. And I'm like, man, all the good stuff ain't going to be clean. Nope. I mean, maybe he should make a, a page where people have to pay extra to see something like yeah. your show or something. Yeah. Like that. If, if, if he say we can go ham, he going to want this show. Man, right. tell, him, tell him to go check it out right now on YouTube. Meet me at the meet me at the movies, D A movies, and yeah. that that series is hilarious. We got season three and four on there, and I think one is on there as well. Um, mm -hmm. the first the first season we did, but I'm like, this show is at least seven. Woo, we've been doing it like seven, maybe seven to eight years mm -hmm. off and on. Yeah. We had to stop and start because things kept happening. Yeah, so, of course. Um, uh, eventually, it's going it's going to kick, and we'll be able to get it on television. At this point, I don't care if it's a streaming service, a network, somebody got to get it. But it's got to be some money involved too, because we can't right. be just shooting some show for free. And we we did that already on Facebook and YouTube, so we we trying to get this money now. So yeah, well, that's that's what he's offering. I'm I'm gonna try to talk him into having a paid page on his thing that uh, that people, or at least a, a page where people have to. Um, uh, say that they're a certain age and that they know it's going to be content because a clean that clean stuff ain't really getting purchased no. right especially no. on the internet people be at no. home but that would I, be I perfect can, I can what see, you got is perfect 
I can see clean on regular television. Why would I pay the streaming service to go watch more clean stuff? And, I mean, and most of the people ain't watching TV no more. You know, no, so because, stop yeah, watching television. Because the, the, there's too many rules on television. It's like at this point, we we grown kids know a lot more stuff than you think they know, and you don't right. have to hide from them no more. Like they they know, shoot, they know how to find porn hub. So I mean, you think, shoot, I found I found my son watching porn at 14 on on uh, <laughs> on the computer. I'm like, what? They got porn on the computer? Like, he right? right. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So you know, they'll, they'll find it. They want it. They'll find it. Anything, find, anything is tangible. Yeah, absolutely. They own it. I just joined your page on uh, Meet Me at the Movies. You got a uh, crazy ass Jay on there. Yeah, you. me and Jay is on that show. <laughs> that's my that's my dog. That's my brother for life. But man, listen, that show is hilarious. But we really need we want people to keep watching it for now. Yeah, but we really want to get on the network, you know, and get that show shown and yeah. let the masses see us do our thing live and just act act the fool. They absolutely. Would love it. Definitely. Absolutely, that's dope, man. That's awesome, brother. So give me some, uh, give me some more um, cool Bubba Ice um, things where people can come and check you out. You know what I mean? Like uh, you got the Instagram; they can catch you out on Instagram on your personal page. Nah, right. I mean I, I got Facebook, but it, it's been falling apart. I, like I try to try to <laughs> I try you to out here grinding. Grind. You ain't got no time yeah. for social media. But not even that. It's just the point that when I, I post on Facebook. And three people watch it, three people like it or whatever. But I post it on Instagram, I get 30, 40, 50, sometimes 150, 200, 300, whatever. But yeah. when I post on Facebook, it's like, hey, two, three, four. I'm like, I'm not <laughs> on this crap. Ain't nobody on Facebook no more. Yeah. Like, as, soon as, as soon as you take a break off of Facebook, like your whole algorithm just drops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm but on TikTok. I'm on Facebook. TikTok is real popular right now. You need to get it. You got you on there? I'm on TikTok too. I'm, I'm, I've got more. I, I'm getting more hits on TikTok and, and Instagram than anything. So I think I'm gonna start pushing more for those pages. But my Instagram is yeah. Hoop of Ice with a K, K O O L B U B B A I C E, and TikTok is the same name again, Hoop of Ice with a K. Yeah. Um, my Facebook page, Hoop of Ice with a K. So everything is Hoop of Ice. Yep, I never change up nothing. Bump that. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I, I understand that. My next point, like, how'd you come up with the name? Cool Bubba Ice. Let's get that on record right now. I didn't, I didn't come up with the name. So my boy came up with the name. At the time, we this uh, we was back back to um, Uptown Comic Club in Harlem. This yeah. was in 1990. Was it 90 or 91? I think it was, it might have been 90. I think it was, it was 90. It was 90. Yeah. It was 1990. We had this thing called the um, Uptown, <coughs> Uptown Comedy Club at the Celebration. Uh -huh. So they opened for like a year. So it was having an anniversary show. So they wanted to put this big old, big, uh, uh, big old show together for the celebration. So one night, one of the comedians, his name, his name, um, <laughs> his name was Mac Daddy, and later <laughs> changed it on to he first know was Pimp Daddy, then he changed it to Mac Daddy. Okay. So what it was, he was a pimp comedian talking about. Uh, being a pimp before Cat Williams is even thought of. Yeah. And he was talking about being a pimp and how it was hard to be a pimp and putting the jokes in between. It was hilarious. So what he did was he made, see when he was going to do the player's ball and I was going to be his bodyguard. He said, you're going to be my bodyguard. You're going to be Bubba Ice. I said, what? He said, yeah, you're going to be my bodyguard. Bubba Ice. I said, all right, cool. I'll be Bubba Ice. So I, I we, did the, we did the celebration. I was Bubba Ice. We did this big old spiel thing and skit before he performed. It was hilarious. And um, I just said, you know what? I'm going to stick with that. I'm going to be Bubba Ice from now on. And then one night, my boy, Monterio Ivy, rest in peace, he said, coming to the stage, cool, Bubba Ice. And uh, I just ran with it. And I yeah, never stopped. Yeah. I ran with exactly. it ever since. Well, it is branded. It is an iconic brand. Everybody you know, uh, you know, knows you, and then you got that jacket with the fur coat on. That shit is that's a hot. <laughs> yeah, you, you yeah. Roll that shit everywhere from uh, L.A. all the way to China. You know what I'm saying? Actually, yeah. it's this this cat. If uh, I, I know you, you haven't checked out my podcast, but it's this cat in um, in China that's starting to do comedy, right? Um, and China's wide open, but they have so many restrictions. But because your show is all music based, well, not all, but you know what I mean? You got a good solid, that one joke you do with the music and all your other stuff. Because most of your, I've never seen you be like unreasonably dirty. You know what I'm saying? You 
You, you got a really solid, very entertaining show that can go whatever demographic, right? Because hip hop is important and, and known. Now you should get out there. He was telling me one dude who just started ended up getting a contract for 200K. I was like, uh, I'll be out there as soon as y'all open the doors back up. Yeah, yeah, right? 200K. Yeah, it's, it's not, yeah, it's, it's not like people be thinking, I'm just sitting home chilling like, ah, I don't want to make no money. I'm like, no. I don't know about some of the stuff. Some of the stuff yeah. people tell me about, and then some of the stuff um, I learned about it too late or whatever, because I be on the road so much. But yeah. the last two weeks have been crazy where I've been running on the road hard. I but know. then next, next week is, the next couple of weeks after this is, is like, I got to fly out one day or fly out this day, or I got local, like next week is a light week. So I got yeah. local shows next week. So I'm like, phew, I just want to regroup for now because I've been on the road since Monday of last week. Yeah, people don't yeah. people don't understand how grueling that road is, you know. What I mean? Oh yeah. So I, I I see like when when um, you and I when I picked you up that one time from the airport, I'm like, man, you you that grind that some of y'all do, man, is is phenomenal, bro. You oh yeah, that's to you on that, man. And you that's you, appre you appreciate them days off, like I'm off. Yeah. Woo! You see right. that? Right. I yeah. get to lay down on my bed. You know, yeah. what I, mean? I get to look my girl in the face. You know, what I mean, that type of shit <laughs> instead of on the on the phone. And shit. Yeah, so that's that's it, man. So where you at right now? You back in Jersey? You, at, you at, I'm you in at? Rochester, I'm in Rochester, New York tonight. Uh, last night I was in um, Raleigh, Durham. We had John Hinton last night. That oh, show was crazy. Yeah. Uh, today we was out. Tuesday I was in Boston. Monday I had a local show. Um, tomorrow I can go to Chicago. Two yeah. shows with Leon Rogers. Saturday I'm off. And then Sunday I go to um Sunday I'm going to what you call it. Sunday I'm going to Delaware to host a show for my boy out there in Delaware. Who who's the comic in Delaware? Uh the headliner for that night is his name is Denny Live out of Philadelphia. Oh, okay. I'm not familiar with him. Yeah, Denny Live, he a fool. Go go Google him. He a whole fool. We a little short. Funny as <laughs> Denny crazy as hell. So that's gonna be a good show. That's good stuff, man. So, yeah, again, man, I appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule. I know you want to get, get you a little rest or whatever, man. And, and uh, thank you so much for being my friend and a, a member of my uh, podcast. Now, at this point, when I get some more, we're going to do some, we're going to make some money together.